black guy, a Puerto Rican, and a Jew walk into a playground, a bowling alley, a music class for toddlers. Sometimes they are with their children, and sometimes it's just the three of them planning a meeting. Or they are in the midst of a small group of other men listening to each other about the joys and the daily calamities of being a father. It started with Billy and Les. I saw a short video that Les made of his daughter's birth announcement on Facebook. A mock horror film, his head over heels love for his daughter undisguised. I thought, this is my guy. Then we met Eric. Who arrived to a father's meeting in my kitchen with his curious and talkative 21 year old son, not yet a father in tow. Over the last 10 years, I have been working with fathers' organizations around Philadelphia, as well as rites of passage programs for African-American boys. When we met for coffee the next week, he confided in me that he was excited about working with fathers. More excited than I could show. The leadership team was complete. All right, now, can we start? In preparing for the Fathering Festival, Eric, Les, and I have been meeting every couple of weeks with a group of dads in my living room. This is kind of the bread and butter of the enterprise. These evenings often start with a tentative air. In the moment I open the door to greet them on the porch, each man's face shows something of a six-year-old boy arriving shakily at a group play date where he doesn't know the others, wondering if this will be a spot he'll feel welcome and maybe have some fun. What has unfolded surprises all of us continually. We talk about our lives as fathers, what we love about our children, the daily emotional and physical and financial challenges of parenting, what we discover about ourselves as nurturers, and what we can't yet figure out about what is still new and unfamiliar to many of us in these roles. Each and every father that we've talked to in these father circles have had a story that we all identified with. And that is really helpful. Strength in numbers, that sort of support, you really can't get that anywhere else. So going through the, the, the good times and the bad times and know that you're not alone is what makes these, um, these father groups everything. Okay, you ready? It's okay. He's got sunglasses too. Look at that. What's that? We're Ooh. twins. What were the highlights? What did you appreciate about getting to be um, as, on a, as a play day? Everyone was just really kind with each other. And even when, even when um, Aaliyah um, and Maz was on the, uh, the little bouncy horse, mm -hmm. and Aaliyah was like, yeah, yeah, and then Maz went, boop. And we all took a moment. Aaliyah was like, <laughs> <laughs> like just checked in with her, and then she started crying. But Aaliyah was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was going to mess with her, like, see, you did that vote. But I was just like, no, it's cool. She'll be fine, whatever. These moments, I've never seen anything like it. The thing that I was really struck by was the way your son introduced himself. Oh, that I, I'm yeah. like, please tell me what you did. Because <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I want to pass that on to my daughter. Well, um, oh man. My father always told me to be a man, you gotta see a man. God rest his soul, he kind of, I wish he was still here so I could bounce things off of him, you know what I mean? But just teaching Rayvon a basic handshake. I just, I'm just starting off from scratch. I'm just freestyling. Like, let me just teach you how to shake a man's hand properly. Squeeze a little bit, look a man right in the eye, you tell him your name, you ask their name. And I use it sometimes, for like if I forget somebody's name, like, yo, get it, get it, introduce yourself, get it, name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I never felt like, you know, the men were off to the side somewhere and the kids were just busy doing them. There was always a constant flow of parenting and involvement and interaction with other people's kids. and. I just thought that was really good. But the one moment I remember mm -hmm. is when my daughter used a napkin and put it back on the, on the fresh pile of napkins. He was like, no, don't do that, don't do that, before I can say it. But I think that was symbolic of the whole village 
thing. You know what I mean? The whole it takes a village. Because before I can even say it, and I would have probably said it wrong. <laughs> Get that, oh, don't do that. But he was like, <laughs> right. no, baby, don't do that. You can't put that on top of there. And she just did it. She just moved it just as nicely. And mm-hmm. it was cool. And I think that, mm-hmm. and I tell people all the time, when you meet my children, you, you got, you got the, green, the green light. Like, if y'all ever see Rayvon somewhere, as he gets older, doing anything you're not supposed to do, boom. You remember me? Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, check him. Because I would be more upset with you if you didn't do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. him, for him saying, for Eric to say, look, don't do that, babe. Boom. And it was cool. As we talk, the faces change and soften, almost despite ourselves. There is knowing laughter of recognition. The guys listen intently. There are tears. We are continually surprised. I believe that it's a really important initiative and it's rare that people talk about parents uh, being taking care of their kids. And it was the first time for me to be in a, in a room in which parents came together to talk about parenting and uh, being a parent. And I thought that it was uh, definitely very special. In subsequent evenings, we talk about the residues of our boyhoods. Violence on the schoolyards, our own fathers way more distant than they or we would have ever wanted. We listen to each other describe how all this plays out with our own children. And how we each struggle not to act out at our wives and co-parents the sexism El sexismo that we were saturated with. El cual conocimos desde que éramos pequeños. We begin to learn parenting tools, build relationships with each other, and each other's children. Father Circles have been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed being able to have a moment to sit back and contemplate about being a dad with other dads who are doing the same thing. And the ability to meet such interesting people who are fathering in different ways, but all have the goal of being as good at this as, as they can be. That's a lot of fun. Get ready for it, buddy. Whoa, watch it. Comenzamos a aprender lo que necesitan los padres y aprendemos construir relaciones entre nosotros y nuestros hijos. We see the project in solidarity with mothers. As we learn to back each other as a community of fathers, building more equitable parenting practices, we want to support the women to create the kinds of life family balances they would want. It wasn't until I I was 24, this, this was a huge shift in my life, when um, I was married and I was doing everything I was told. And you know, you're supposed to keep your woman in check and this, this and that. And uh, it was just like, if I'm doing everything right based off everything I was told, why am I not getting the desired results? And that's when I finally figured out this must not be the right way. <laughs> um, and, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was like, that's so real. Huh. And since, since then, I have been trying to um, deconstruct the misogyny, sexism that I've learned over the years. The world plays a trick on you to make you believe that your manhood is defined by how many women you sleep with. However, it's actually the opposite. Your manhood is defined by how many women you don't sleep with. I think the whole objectivity, the sexism, the misogyny comes into play when we start having sex. It's confusing as a man, but we have to reprogram our sons. To, like, look, that's not that's not how you, that's not what we do. I, mean, I think I don't know if any of you ever, if any of you saw your partner or anyone, any woman ever give natural childbirth, like have babies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think anyone <laughs> much think that women are not the most powerful entities in the universe. Oh, right. <laughs> After that, I think that any 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 boy who's playing around in high school or whatever to be the see that this, the power of the entire nature is just in that moment. El Fathering Circle ha formado un consejo de madres para ayudarnos. The Fathering Circle has formed a mother's council to advise us along the way. When we started out, we were, you know, it was kind of writing the things like, 
You know, I apprentice myself to people. And um, not many of us ever got a chance to apprentice ourselves to a father or to be around small children, you know, with any kind of guidance when we were young. And I think there are more opportunities now to do that than there were when, at least I, when I was little. We're creating a circle of Philadelphia fathers committed to ongoing engagement of our children. Estamos creando un círculo de padres en Philadelphia toward building communities and families of resilience. Resiliencia. Resilience. Respect. Respect. Respeto. And equity. Equidad.